what goes up? Must come down. This is the story of the 1986 Bloomfest disaster. I've been in the nonprofit world since I was 16 years old, and if there's one thing I know, it's how incredibly difficult raising funds is. Nonprofits run on donations, and in order to have donations, you have to have people, and in order to have people, you have to raise awareness about your organization in the first place. And people raise awareness through all kinds of ways. There are fancy dinners, there's costume parties, there's conferences, you got the classic walkathons, but there is one nonprofit and they have got a big vision. And as far as they're concerned, rinky-dink little fundraisers like that are for chumps. And they are called United Way. United Way's history goes all the way back to the 1800s. Although they didn't officially become United Way until the 1970s. They were the largest nonprofit organization until 2016. And for over 100 years, they have literally affected billions of lives in one way or another. They've helped fund organizations like the Boy Scouts, the Girl Scouts, the Salvation Army, the American American Cancer Society and so many others. And in 1986, United Way wanted to do a fundraiser and help the city of Cleveland at the same time. You see, Cleveland hadn't really been in the best shape. The Great Depression in the 1930s had brutalized the city and they had never really recovered from it. And on top of that, Cleveland businesses were impacted by the influx of Japanese cars that were coming in and were newfound competition with American-made cars. The governing officials had been working for years to clean up Cleveland, give it a better name, make the streets cleaner, more attractive for people, and the cherry on top of the proverbial banana split was, let's rebrand this city as cool. They wanted to do some kind of cool, hip event that would be burned into the brains of the people of Cleveland and the United States forever, and burned into our brains it was. Just not for the reasons they envisioned. United Way saw what Cleveland was wanting to do, and they themselves needed a big fundraiser to raise money for their organization. It just so happened that in 1985, one year before before, Disneyland had celebrated its 30th anniversary. And how did they celebrate it? By breaking the previous Guinness World Record of launching the most helium-filled balloons into the sky. Disney launched 1,209,600 balloons. And it went really smooth and was very memorable. And as United Way and the Cleveland officials are looking for some kind of spectacle that they can do to raise money, you can just imagine whoever the top two guys were slowly looking at each other, locking eyes, and the light bulb going off at the same time as they thought balloons. They originally thought that they would launch 2 million balloons into the sky, but then deemed that to be too much and decided to go with 1.5 million. That would allow them to break Disney's record, cement themselves in the literal history books, raise a lot of money for United Way, and burn into people's brains how cool Cleveland really was. They would get local kids to find sponsors to buy two balloons for $1. So of course, if you do the math, that would raise $3 million, and then you discount whatever the expenses were. Either way, it's a lot of money. And thus, they would fulfill habit number four from Stephen Covey's book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, which is the win-win. So I can imagine they all high-fived, shouted, habit number four, baby, and then got to work. They spent the next six months planning for this event, and when that glorious day appeared, September 27, 1986, over 2,500 volunteers descended upon the area, eyes wide open with the excitement and naivete of a group of people doomed to a swift, swift Swift failure. Oh, hey, by the way, since you're watching, why not subscribe to the channel? I'm telling you, you got some awesome videos. You gotta hit the subscribe button and also click the notifications. You know, that little bell, it tells you when I have new videos coming out. Thanks. Now back to the story. This army of volunteers spent the entire morning filling 1.5 million balloons with helium, a structure the size of a full city block and three stories high had been built to contain all of these balloons. And as it filled up, the atmosphere was electric. The original plan was to launch the balloons in the afternoon, but they saw that a storm was coming in. So they decided to do the wise thing and launch the balloons early. And at 1.50 p.m., they launched 1.5 million balloons into the open, gaping maw of a storm with giggles of glee and shouts of victory. As another round of high fives and habit number four babies happened, a local DJ declared triumphantly on the radio station, Cleveland has now broken the Guinness Book of World Records and launched 1.5 balloons. And after that, it went exactly as any sane person would have realized as the black, black storm clouds came at them. The cold air mixed with the storm winds immediately pushed all of these balloons right back down into the city, scattering them across the entire area and caused mass chaos. The sudden colorful swarm overwhelmed the area, and this was the 
80s, so not everybody knew what was going on. There was no social media. So a lot of people were completely shocked and taken by surprise by what they were seeing. Drivers especially were of course distracted and started just slamming into each other. One report said the accidents happened as drivers swerved to avoid slow motion blizzards of multicolored orbs or took their eyes off the road to gawk at the overhead spectacle. Another blanket of balloons descended upon a local pasture full of horses and caused permanent damage to the horses. The owner sued United Way for $100,000. And the saddest thing of all is that two fishermen had gone missing the night before and the Coast Guard had just started their search for them when thousands of balloons landed on the water. And this completely impeded their search. One of the searchers said that the balloons had made it impossible to find them because they were looking for orange life jackets or heads and balloons and there were thousands of orange balloons and they're all round like heads so there was no way for them to be able to see. The bodies were found washed up on shore two days later and the family sued United Way for $3.2 million. It was settled out of court, but you know United Way paid a lot. And for all of that, Cleveland was then branded as something other than cool. United Way lost everything they raised and much more, including a huge hit to their reputation. And while the Guinness Book of World Records did publish that record in 1988, they immediately removed that record because of the obvious safety reasons. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment below.